Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. In the past on this channel we have looked at various different characters from the Street Fighter universe, including the likes of Evil Ryu and Violent Ken, transformative states of two of the franchise's main stars that represent what would have happened to each of them if they chose to take darker paths. While these two selectable fighters hold the latest spots on the Street Fighter 2 roster, there have been more examples of other characters from this world also fighting in alternative forms. I believe someone cracked a joke in the comment section recently asking me what's next for the channel. Nice guy Akuma? Peaceful Bison? As amusing as these suggestions are, believe it or not, the most tyrannical man from this video game series, M. Bison has transformed in video games in the past. So today we are going to look into these instances and see what those were all about. This ladies and gentlemen is the story of the terrifying M. Bison 2 transformation. Yeah. Looking back at the many entries from Street Fighter's catalogue of games, M. Bison has been featured as the final boss and primary antagonist within plenty of these classics, imprinting his image in many gamers' minds as one of the most memorable villains in all of gaming history. Across each of these, M. Bison is never depicted as a regular human being with natural abilities but instead wields what is known in the game as Psycho Power, an evil negative psychotic energy that is spiritual in nature. Bison using his Psycho Power can feed off of fear, anger and hatred of others, thus meaning the worse his behaviour gets, the more powerful he can potentially become. Little is known about the history of Psycho Power itself, or how Bison originally obtained his powers but it is known to achieve mastery of it, all good and light must be purged from oneself. In Bison's appearances in the games over the years, he has used various technologies such as the Psycho Drive to enhance his powers, and even when his body has been destroyed in combat, using his Psycho powers he has been known to transfer his body into new vessels. With the early 90s explosion in popularity that Street Fighter 2 would bring for all of its characters, this would result in M. Bison gaining starring roles across multiple live action movies, feature length animations, television series and even comic books. With M. Bison featuring an enhanced form first showing up in Street Fighter the movie, the arcade game, the ridiculous Mortal Kombat like experience featuring digitised versions of the well known cast. The game, developed by a Chicago-based company Incredible Technologies, would feature a fighter known as Super Bison, the final boss for the game. It is said that the Super Bison concept was inspired by a scene in the 1994 movie that takes place after the final credits roll. This depicts Bison's hand rising from the rubble after his fight with Guile, setting up the sequel that we never received. While we never got a Street Fighter the movie 2, a more powerful form of M. Bison at least made it to this strange game. Super Bison retains all of the moves as Bison which he can perform in his regular state, but is now noticeably faster and can do more damage with each of his attacks. He also gains the ability to be able to perform his special moves in mid-air and can now use mid-air sliding kicks. Super Bison can be played as using third party cheat devices within the game and it is of note that all of his special moves require less charge time than normal. This version of the character that dons an all black attire also now has an Akuma like aura that follows him as he uses certain attacks. But this game wasn't the last time that we saw a more powerful form of M. Bison. The next time we would see M. Bison take an alternate form would be in the 3D polygonal fighting game known as Street Fighter EX2 that saw release in 1998. The EX series that was created by Akira Nishitani and his development house Arika are not considered canon games to the mainline Street Fighter titles, making the sub-series the Dragon Ball GT of the Street Fighter universe. This does not mean though that these titles do not feature some interesting stories and characters of their own to showcase to the world, offering up perhaps Bison's most intriguing form yet. 
The Street Fighter EX story that takes place in an alternate timeline sees Bison take a form known as Bison 2 within Street Fighter EX2+. Bison 2 exists in this game wearing an almost unholy looking white uniform and gains unlimited SC energy in this transformed state. Further to this, he gains the ability to perform new variations of his Psycho Cannon Super Combo and is able to charge them to twice of their normal size. How does he pull off this more powerful form you may ask? Well in the game if certain conditions are met and players are able to defeat Bison in the final showdown, then while his body remains injured on the floor, one of his spare bodies that he has created descends from above surrounded by floating embers. In this moment M. Bison manages to perform a fusion technique fusing with himself becoming the even more powerful and even more frightening Bison 2 as a result. In this state, the temple ruins where the original Bison fight took place transforms into nothing more than a black void where streaks of energy rise from the ground, making this fight the most intimidating in the game of all. Bison 2 is even more aggressive than the regular tyrannical dictator and frequently uses his teleportation abilities to disorientate opponents as much as he possibly can. What may come as a surprise to many is that, that Bison 2 is not even Bison's final form. As in the game's sequel for the PlayStation 2, Street Fighter EX3, M. Bison would reveal his full potential within the EX canon. Just like in the previous games, if certain conditions are met and Bison is defeated in his base form, then gamers can face off against the villain in his ultimate state, known as Shin Bison. Shin Bison, like Bison 2, also usually wears a white uniform, however he is now physically larger and his skin has developed a new purple tone. Shin Bison is said to represent M. Bison utilising every bit of strength he can muster to achieve his full potential as a warrior. This enables him to be able to move faster than ever before and recover from attacks at a frightening rate. In terms of in-game mechanics, it is as if Bison is in a permanent XL state and can instantaneously transition techniques such as his double knee press straight into a Psycho Crusher. Shin Bison is a dangerous opponent indeed. Further to this, he can even pull off a terrifying new Meteor combo that is reminiscent of his knee press nightmare that was previously established within the Marvel vs Capcom games. It is also of note that Shin Bison is reminiscent of the boss version of M. Bison that can be found within the arcade version of Street Fighter Alpha 3, in that he has much greater strength than normal while also gaining the final Psycho Crusher super combo. Years later within Street Fighter V's extra battle missions, an all white wearing version of M. Bison would be available to take on that resembled Shin Bison. This powered up version of Bison gives him a number of enhancements, including a backdash that gave him invincibility frames. He can also access his Psycho Crusher technique at any time and his EX Psycho Blast does not cost any of his meter. Paired with a number of other extra abilities, this super aggressive fighter, known as Shadowloo Apparition Bison, is as challenging as ever. Canon to the actual Street Fighter story, at the end of Street Fighter V, Ryu masters a new technique that allows him to destroy M. Bison and seal his powers preventing him from using his psycho powers to enter yet another new body. However while his body is now destroyed, his consciousness itself survives in an incorporeal form. In this phantom state, M. Bison appears in a transparent shade of purple. After the events of the main story in the fighter's individual character arcs, Phantom Bison shows up in Ed's story. Ed is able to fight off his evil spirit and is victorious in doing so, and would also be fought against by Falk in her story. Through all of this, I hope it has helped illustrate some of the extent in which M. Bison with his psycho power is capable of, allowing him to transform into various different states over the years. From Super Bison to Bison 2, Shin Bison and more, the mysterious psycho power appears to know no bounds. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Bison 2, Bison's terrifying transformation. If you enjoyed today's video covering one of the many great characters from Street Fighter's history, I have an entire playlist here for you to check out covering a number of other characters as well. 
Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, you know, all the usual stuff YouTubers normally tell you to do to ensure that you see their content in the future. Ring that bloody notification bell too whilst you're at it. Uh, also, I would like to give a huge thank you to everybody who backs this channel on Patreon. You can see many of their names scrolling on the screen as of now. And something I've been enjoying doing recently is answering a different question from a different patron every video. And today I've got a question from Drewby, who is a long, long term patron of this channel. Over five years, I believe. And he asks, let me get the question. I'm terrible with phones, just to add that. He says, have you ever tried VR? Um, do you have any interest in Oculus or PSVR? Um, yes, uh, I've owned a Virtual Boy uh, for quite a few years now, as, as you will know. And so I'm quite experienced in um, using VR. Other than that, um, I did have a go at uh, the Oculus Rift once um, around my friend Guru Larry's house. And um, I thought it was okay, and I've got the same opinion on um, VR now as what I had when I first had a go at it five years ago. It's basically a trend or a craze at this point in time. A bit like how uh, 3D is as well. It always comes in cycles. I believe 3D was first used in cinemas in the 1950s, and then it became popular again in the 1980s and then it became popular again in the 2010s. So um, 3D raises its ugly head once every 30 years because it's impractical. Everyone realizes it's impractical, forgets about it, and then they reinvent it 30 years later. So expect 3D to make a big comeback in 2040. Same goes for VR. Um, in the middle of the 2010s, um, they try to launch it again, and if you go back to um, the 90s, they were trying their luck with VR then as well. Was it the 80s? Not sure. But either way, VR's had two rounds of trying to be launched. So again, expect it to come back in another 20 years from now. Uh, the only uh, chance I see VR becoming common practice is if Nintendo go, you know what, VR's really old technology, let's try and repurpose it and make it fashionable again because Nintendo are good at repurposing completely useless old technology like look what they did when they made the Game Boy they used well old tech uh, to make that possible maybe they'll do something similar with VR and make that popular but yeah that's what I've got to say on that um, if you like my work maybe you want to become a patron too maybe you've got a question anyway cheerio